Let's take a look at the net questions. So question number one, which 3D shape will the net below form? So if you're not sure, imagine you're doing some origami and let's make, imagine you're making some folds around this square here so that this is the front. So therefore this would be the top, this would be the bottom, this would be the left hand side, this would be the right hand side and one final fold here would mean that this is the back of a cube. With a shape here, again, just imagine you're doing some origami folding here, here, and here. This would be the front, this would be the top, this would be the bottom, so this would be the right-hand side. Another fold here would make this the back, and another fold here would make this the left-hand side of a cuboid. Which of the following nets will form a cube? A cube, um, there's a couple ways you can do it. The, one of the most obvious ways is to have four squares in a line and as long as there is one square above and one square below, it doesn't matter where they are, one can be here and one can be directly underneath or one can be here and the other over here, like literally as long anywhere, as long as one's above and one's below, it's a cube. So A is a cube, uh, C is a cube, B is not a cube because they're uh, both on the bottom, so we'll rule that one out. E is also not a cube because there's only one on the bottom. D isn't a cube because we need six squares, not five. And F, this is another way you can make a cube. It's not very obvious, but if you make some folds here, we we'll call this the front, then this will be the left-hand side. This will be the top, if we make another fold there, of course. Uh, this will be the bottom, and if we make a fold here, then this would be the right-hand side, and this would be the back. Not quite as obvious, but uh, yeah, if you just imagine you're doing origami, you'll realize that A, C, and also F will form a cube. Question number four, uh, to begin with, you just need to pick uh, a side. I'm gonna pick the five by three rectangle and just draw it here. So it's five wide, one, two, three, four, five by three. Um, Bit of guesswork as to where I'm going to stick it. I'm going to stick it somewhere in the middle and hopefully I won't run out of space. Now if I'm fold, I'm going to imagine that these sides are going to be folded out. So that's going to be um, a three by two. So this three is shared with the three of the five by three here. So here's my three. So if this is three by two, I'm going to, these sides will fold out like so. So I've done my base, I've done my two sides. I'm also going to pull this side uh, down here. So that's going to be a five by two. So there's my five, so there's my two. So there's going to be um, five by two here. And also the matching, uh, the corresponding side, which is opposite this, this five by two. So the back, in other words. So if this one's the front, then I'll draw another one here, which is the back. So the only thing I've not accounted for is the top, which is attached either to the front or the back and it's another five by three, so I can draw it here, or I could draw it here as well, either's fine. This isn't the only way that we can uh, draw this net, but for me, this is the most logical. Okay, we want a net for the cuboid here, so I'm gonna start with a five by 5.5 base. Again, uh, if you're using a ruler, that's gonna be a lot easier, so you can measure it, so five by 5.5. .5. Again, I'm gonna pull the sides out. So that's 5.5 by seven. There's my 5.5. So there is my seven. And again, on this side as well. Okay, I've not drawn it excellently. Um, attached to the base, I'm, the, I'm gonna put the, the front and the back on top and bottom. So that's a five by seven. So I'll just draw that and mark that as seven and mark that as five by seven. And the only thing I've not accounted for is the five by 5.5 .5 top, which I can either add to the top or the bottom here. I'm gonna add it to the top. So there's, this is my five, so this side here is my 5.5. .5. So again, that could be down the bottom. And there are other ways you could um, do this net, but for me, this was the most logical. So for question number six, we're just matching up the nets with the 3D shapes. So here we've got six squares, so that is gonna be the net of a cube. Here we have, um, we've got a rectangular base, two rectangles and two triangles. Well, if we make some folds here, 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 and here, and we call this the base, um, either you can 
well imagine you're pulling these towards you that and the pull the triangles towards you then the tips of the triangles will meet these corners here and we will have a Toblerone box and that is a triangular prism. Here we've got a rectangle with a circle on top and a circle on the bottom so that will form a cylinder. A cylinder is the only shape that has a, two circular faces and here we've got a square base with four triangles well obviously it's the square based pyramid but if we fold here, here, here and here and pull all the triangles towards us the tips of these triangles will all meet together and that will form that lovely pyramid shape. So question seven, draw a net for the square based pyramid. So it's got a square base, which is five by five. So five and five. So uh, what we've got on a square based pyramid is a square obviously and four triangles. So I'm gonna draw tra four triangles, which are gonna have a height of seven. Uh, actually it's not height of seven, it's the, the, the slanted height is seven. So ignore that dotted line I've done there. So that is seven, and all of these four triangles are gonna be identical. And there we have it. Question number eight, we need to draw a net for the triangular prism. So what I would do is I just start with this rectangular base, which is three by eight. Again, using a ruler with exact measurements would be good. We've got a tri a triangle on the top and a triangle on the bottom so we're going to sort of fold these out so that there we have two triangles which have a slanted um, height of five there and well we've also got two rectangles now this rectangle is an eight by five and this is going to be attached to the rectangular base so here's I've got the um, eight already so all I need to do is do an eight by uh, five. So th if this is eight by three, then this needs to be a bit wider than that. Obviously, if you're measuring it exactly, then uh, you're not going to have the issues I've got doing it freestyle with the graphics tablet. Uh, and of course, this rectangle is supposed to be the same as that one as well. So there we have it. There is my net of this triangular prism. For question number nine, we need to draw a net for this cylinder. Now, the net of a cylinder is always a rectangle with a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. Now the circle on the top and the circle on the bottom, they can be anywhere on the top and anywhere on the bottom. They don't have to be on opposite corners. They can be directly one on top of the other. As long as one's on the top, one's on the bottom, we're fine. So we know that this dimension here is seven centimeters. We know that the radius of the circle is two centimeters. Now it's asking us to label dimensions. So I suspect what we need to do is also label the dimension here, which is the um, the other dimension of the rectangle. Now this dimension of the rectangle, this rectangle wraps all the way around the circle. In other words, the length of the rectangle is the same as the circumference of the circle. And the formula for the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. So that's 3.14. We've got a radius of two, so the diameter is gonna be four. And 3.14 multiplied by four is 12.4. So we can now label this dimension here as 12.56 centimetres as well.